Welcome to 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews, where we take random movies from Metacritic's 15K Plus Movies to randomly watch whether we like it or not. Hello and welcome to episode 18 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. This is Colin. This is Niall. This is random movie number 1397 on Metacritic's all-time movie list. It's a movie called Truman from 2015. It's an Argentinian movie. It's got 81 Metascore. It's got a 7.8 user score. Budget was 3.8 million and it made 9 million in the box office. So it was pretty successful. Uh, I won a bunch of awards for Spanish speaking uh, movies. Uh, Gaudi Awards, a lot of Gaudi Awards, yeah. um, whatever that is, but Gaudi is an architect, I think, so it sounds pretty important. The director is Sesc Gay, and it was the movie was written by them and Thomas something. <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> I'm not going to try either. I don't want to offend anybody by mispronouncing it. Yeah, it could be a, a Kaji or something, but anyway. Um, as we're not spanish speaking and not from spain or argentina argentina we don't really know anybody involved in this movie and but they are quite uh prolific in the in the uh, yeah and, 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 the, and the two main guys like um, they've been involved in movies and tv with reasonably good success uh like a lot of spanish and argentinian uh stuff that gets highly rated so you know they, they seem to have a good bit of acting behind them and you know they're, they're well regarded yeah yeah and yeah if you look up their 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 filmography there's they've done a whole bunch so the synopsis of this movie obviously doesn't read very uh like a happy movie yeah yeah it's it's like john wick without the violence <laughs> so like in a nutshell uh julian is dying of cancer terminally and he's basically deciding that yeah he's not going to do any chemotherapy anymore and uh, thomas his lifelong friend flies over from canada to madrid and spends four days with him and in that four days they you know dance around the the uh the subject subtle... of his, his departure from this mortal coil i, I do yeah. like the the uh, when they bump into, into each other i think tomash says to uh Julian, uh, i see you've got an erection which i thought was an unusual opening line yeah, it was like, yeah, you're you're happy to see me, you know. So yeah, it's it it's it kind of laid the laid the foundations for like you know the 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 old an old friendship or humor is, you know, yeah, long yeah. grained and you know they're they're comfortable with us saying that type of humor to them to each other. There's quite a lot of banter between the two lads, and and unfortunately, as we as you already said, we're, we're not native Spanish speakers, so I, I think. In in translation to um, subtitles in English, a lot of the humor might be missed. I think I found that anyway, um, not as funny as it possibly could be um, in translation. Yeah, Maybe I'm just uh, too, too stupid to be able to watch a movie and read at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm imagining that there's a lot of um, colloquialisms that we yeah, could, a new that that would have missed on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, the um the movie just starts off quite low key. It's you know Thomas leaving Canada to go and visit him, and he leaves his wife a tender, loving goodbye, which sort of you know uh, doesn't warn us ahead of his decisions at the end of the movie. But no, uh, it does not. No, a couple of kids and a wife, a loving wife, and off he goes. Uh, yeah, and just to hark back to when they when they meet, he shows up at his doorstep. There. It's quite a silent meet re reunion for them. You know, they don't really say a lot. They just stare at each other and they sort of, and that's when he says that line <laughs> that you, you brought up. That's so. a, I, I, I enjoyed that line. It's, it's a, you know, it's one that the nuance wasn't lost on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, it's, you kind of get the sense and the air of what sort of friendship it is from that initial meeting. And, you know, he, he comes in and he's brought him a bottle of Canadian club whiskey, which isn't not that bad of a whiskey, actually. Uh, oh. And I think, go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say, you've sampled? I have sampled it, yeah. Oh. It's kind of like bourbon in a way, in a sense. Yeah, okay. Yeah, which I'm a fan of. Um, you kind of initially get a very very quickly in um, the impression that 
Julian does not want to be talked out of any, anything. He basically just says that to, to Thomas. Yeah, says, I hope you're not here mind, to talk me out of anything. His mind's made up, and and and, and Thomas, uh, in fairness, does try, um, but he's quickly shut down. He said, "Listen, if you want to start talking like that, you can back in the plane, mate." Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's you know, I think for my little WhatsApp messages with you, I think you enjoyed this movie. I think I think there's a there's a I think that the movie could have gone a bit deeper and a little bit more uh, into their friendship, I believe. Like, a, a lot was not said. Uh, yeah, and I, I get what you're saying, but I think that's kind of the point, though, uh, in that that's their relationship. They don't talk about the lovey-dovey crap. They just, for the most part, take the, 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 the Michael out of each other. They, they <laughs> slag each other off. Um as opposed to saying what they actually think. And, and and there's a few moments in the movie where you can kind of see that the two lads want to say something, but they, they, they hold it back. Yeah. But I don't know, in a sense, we don't really get anywhere then. And I understand that that's the theme and that's the, the air that we're supposed to be getting. But I don't think, I didn't think it, it wasn't as emo emotionally charged as I thought it was going to be. And <laughs> Truman the dog and the title of the movie is obviously named after a dog it really isn't he's not developed. used no he's honest. not used no it's 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 there there's a theme through it of them trying to you know obviously adopt yeah. the dog out he's more of a MacGuffin than a, a central like I, I was expecting him to be a sort of a central character to to the movie because it's it's named Truman and the dog in the cover of the movie uh yeah like Turner and Hooch Exactly, um, but the, 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 no, he's not. He's not really used to great effect, uh, which is kind of a shame. Um, there, there's a few moments, but th there are few and far between, unfortunately. Yeah, and I think those few moments are great. And obviously, we're all suckers for dogs, and especially this type of dog. It's got a very emotional face on it. It's got a very yeah, he's a very of... sad boxer. Um, yeah, yeah. The lovely and... hound. Yeah, a lovely hound. And yeah, so I just felt that there could have been a lot more done with with developing the dog element of it and also perhaps some sort of journey from not sharing their feelings to t towards the end sharing their feelings. And they didn't really do that. And we'll talk about it later, but it pretty much uh, Julian only breaks down crying after he's done something stupid. So... We'll talk about that later. So, um, yeah, so it starts off and we get this sort of the theme of the dog adoption. So basically he he wants to obviously give up the dog and he puts the pictures up in the vet's office. And I think this is, I think the vet scene is quite, quite good. Uh, it's very because, good, actually, I thought. Um, in, yeah. Because in it, his friends in the background and he... Only then cops what he's doing in the vet. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, you're you're asking the vet what psychological effect my departure from from you know me snuffing it is going to have on the dog. Um, but I thought that was a good scene because he's he's into you know his only concern now is making sure the dog is looked after when he when he's when he's gone. Yeah, and it's getting into the just the nitty gritty and the logistics, the banal logistics of actually dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> which apparently there's quite a lot. Um, and and well, actually, one thing I'll say about the movie is that I, I found I uh, found a little bit of a sense of while not a lot happens, even though they rush around the place a bit, there's a sense of anxiety because he's only there for four days and he's not never going to see his friend after that. So they, there's a feeling of anxiety and. While they don't do as much with the time that they had together as they should have, um, it feels like because they're faffing away the time a little bit, that to me anyway, I find it a little bit grating. And I think that might be intentional, kind of an uncut diamond type sort of just wreck in my head. Why are you doing this sort of stuff? You're making silly decisions, lads. Mm. Um, I don't know if you got that. Um, yeah, I didn't. I, I think they say it near the end as well. It's like these four days have gone so fast. I feel, and he actually says it's like Thomas says, he says, I he feel does, like yeah. we haven't really talked that much. And they I was like, hadn't. yeah, well, they hadn't. I'm like, you know, and that's, 
and that's life, you know, that's, that's time flies by very quickly. And sometimes you think you have enough time for conversations, but you really don't. And maybe sometimes you don't have the uh, emotional intelligence sometimes to actually have the conversation that you want to have in your, in your, that you have in your head. I know it's all very philosophical here, but um, <laughs> that's what you think of though, because this movie is very much, as I said before, it doesn't really get deep into emotional things that I thought it would have, but it also deals with, the, as I said, the banality and the, just the mundanity of dying and the stuff that he was trying to put into order before he left and he knew he was leaving. Yeah, and I think that sort of goes in, you know, that segues into the hospital scene when he goes. So after he gets, goes to the vet and he makes Thomas <laughs> quite uncomfortable and sort yeah. of, you know, he was, he was sort of getting, he's kind of getting the gist of, okay, this is, this is happening. And then he goes to the hospital and he sort of, uh, Julian then sort of, uh, what so ambushes the doctor and Thomas by going, listen, I don't want to do chemotherapy. So. And, and then he explains to the doctor and like Julian or uh, Tomash doesn't accept it really, but the doctor's like, yeah, okay. I get your point. Yeah. Cause he basically yeah. asks, you know, if, if I get chemo, will, will it save my life? Will it cure me? And the doctor's like, no, not a chance. Uh, you just live a little bit longer. And he's like, right. I'm off. Yeah. Thanks very much, Mr. Doctor. And Julian's like, uh, yeah, sure. I was like, Tomash is. Um, yeah. Well, actually, what I found very interesting is they, as they're waiting for the doctor to turn up, there's a little calendar uh, on the doctor's desk. And for some reason, there's a there's a Caravaggio where the scene is basically people cutting into other people with a big do you, want me, to, do you want me to be and my art history nerd self here. That's not a Caravaggio. Oh, I thought it was a Caravaggio. <laughs> it looks like a Caravaggio. I didn't yeah. look it up. It's quite dramatic. No, that's a Rembrandt. Is it? Sorry. Okay. No. Yeah. Damn it. I think it's called cut, the... Cut that bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave it in. Damn it. And show my art history prowess. <laughs> yeah, I remember that bit. Yeah, and they kind of look at that. Yeah, that's true. I, I didn't take note of that, but now I'm remembering it. They kind of look at each other, and I think Thomas pulls a face. You know, he's not very comfortable with what the painting is depicting. <laughs> yeah, the big rib in, in a doctor's surgery. Like, it's a bit, yeah. Yeah. Not appropriate. Sorry, anyway. No. No, it's just that, no, um, he's just there to, he basically just says, I'm just here to say goodbye to you, doctor. Thanks for everything. I'm, go I'm going to miss the nurses. So he's just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they head into a bookshop then, I, uh, you know, and buy some books to deal with death. Uh, nothing. A dog psychology book for dogs. For the dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, um, he heads to the theater with Paula, which is obviously, a, it's, it's, uh, Julian's cousin, but obviously an old friend of Thomas. Quite clearly. Yeah. And, you know, he opens up a little bit in the cafe after it. He says, you know, this is the first of my friends who's dying, you know, and it's sort of, that sort of made a connection with me because I was, um, one of my, one of my schoolmates passed away a few years ago and he was one of the, he was one of the first to die in the class, mm -hmm. you know, from primary school. And it's a very, it's a shocking moment when somebody you grew up with oh, they, yeah and it's a kick in your own mortality feelings as well like as you know it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's suddenly you're like oh shit, yeah we we die oh crap yeah yeah it's not fun um this i don't know this movie doesn't really hark on the m misery of it all it's sort no, of it doesn't, it doesn't dwell too much on it and I, I i don't know how i feel about that i'm, I'm kind of glad of it because it's not as depressing and sad as it could have been considering the subject matter and it could have been mm. really dark and miserable it's, it's kind of light in, in many places it, it, but it does go there every now and then oh yeah and like I, I think it does a good job you know because uh well he 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 calls him at 4 a.m and uh, later on and he's he asks off, him off his bin <laughs> yeah yeah because he's he's taking a bit of devil's weed or devil's cabbage what's that yeah devil's cabbage whatever um yeah, he's smoking some speed, of that isn't it or whatever <laughs> what crystal meth <laughs> speed yeah. <laughs> uh he asks him now because this also made a connection with me too because you know i didn't know you're religious and julian says oh, i'm very atheist i was very atheist but not anymore 
And you know, it's only when you face your own mortality and maybe some, you know, from personal experience, I sit in a, a hospital bed once and I was like, oh, I may as well say a wee prayer. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case I'm wrong about this whole atheism thing. Uh, yeah. the, the lads up there going, I ah, know you didn't believe in us, so you can feck off. You can yeah, end up in a nice hot spot down below. <laughs> you're on your own. Yeah. You didn't believe in me in the, in the, the boring days. You're not going to come calling when you're actually struggling to you know, stay on the mortal coil, you know, but, uh, that's, um, that, that struck a chord with me and, you know, that's, that was a yeah. little, little nuance there and a little, just little something that some, not everybody will pick up. Uh, they go to the, toward the first adoptive family for, for, um, Truman and, you know, yeah, it's just kind of a nothing scene, really. It's no, actually, no. The leaving of him is quite emotional, actually. Yeah, yeah. The, the chap with him is 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 kind of man like. It's like yeah. you know they're, they're discussing the logistics of it. Um, but as, as you say, uh, as he's walking off, you, you can see it, it's it's tearing him up inside because you know yeah, it's, it's his death buddy. Yeah. He's leaving behind. He's been with him for years and sleeps with him in the same room all forever. Like so, yeah, he's not in a good way after that. No, yeah, and I just wish we'd seen more of that relationship. Though he talks about it, he says what he, you know, he sleeps with him, whatever, and takes bathes him, whatever. I think, yeah. I think we needed to see more of the relationship between Julian and uh, Truman right? because it's alluded to, and we don't see enough of it. I, I, I don't believe. Uh, he then goes coffin shopping, <laughs> which. <laughs> Which, which that was fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then and then his friends is like, uh, so what are the actual prices of all this stuff? Would you mind sending me an email? He goes, I don't know my brain's going on anymore. Yeah. But uh, that's another thing that struck with me because um, I, I have gone in and picked a coffin. Well, I picked a coffin for for my dad. And you just go, it was, on, it was like in an attic room of the funeral directors and you just walk up and there's just a room full of coffins and it's the most that's weird that's not just hollywood or well no. the, the argentinian version of hollywood uh, okay no. I, I thought it's it would so, be like a brochure or, you know amazon no you gotta, no, no, you gotta see this you gotta kick the wheels <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> put some you know put the lid up and then oh yeah that's good action yeah that's that's nice no oh, yeah you get the, yeah. if the hinges aren't good it's crap like yeah, if it creaks like the uh, Dracula's, it's like, nah, don't want oh, no, it. That, that, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to pop the open halfway through the funeral. Yeah. <laughs> that, gotcha. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, yeah, so I think uh, during that during that conversation, again, it's that subtle nuances of the logistics and the banality of death, like uh, Julian brings up. Oh, like do all the ashes fit in the urn? And the guy just said, "Yeah, the ashes end up small." It's tiny. <laughs> and then he and and, yeah, and yeah. that that shows on his face, doesn't it? Like, it, oh yeah, because it, it's then he's like, "Oh, I I end up in just a little bit of ash," and he's like, "Oh," mm. and he just he just shuts up then, and leaves Tamash to take care of some of the logistics and talk to the chap about some more details because he, he he's just kind of shut down at that point, which I get. <laughs> It's, um, it also brought up a memory of me, just, um, I know in the Chinese culture, maybe it's Japanese as well. It's Asian culture. When you cremate somebody, right? A member of your family, let's say it's one of your parents, you then very shortly after they get cremated, you get, you go into a room and you pick the bones out of the ash. Really? Then you you stuff the bones into an urn or something yourself. You actually physically go through the process. Now I'm not smart enough to remember why that process is. I know a friend of mine did it uh, for his father-in-law, and yeah, I was just like, wow. That was the first I heard of it. And it was like crazy. It's just such. It I feels like something before. I, something I wouldn't fancy doing, to be honest. But you know, it's a, uh, it's like a different culture, I guess. It's yeah, no, it's just, just made me remind. Them. It kind of does, it gives you that mortality again, you know, you're, yeah, yeah. what's that memento mori? Is that what the, the Latin, you know, you're, um, don't, don't ask me Latin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, memento mori. It's like something like, you know, always remember that you're going to pass on or whatever. 
anyway, um, yeah, this is going crazy, bleak <laughs> and dark, but well, this yeah. is, it is a movie about death. Um, so let's just see what happens then. Um, oh yeah, so then they're they're in a restaurant. One one. This was actually I don't know why I I was emotional for this scene, but they're in a restaurant and uh, there's a guy in the restaurant where Julian basically had an affair with the the guy's wife and broke up the marriage. And this guy comes over after a couple earlier on in the movie didn't go over to Julian because they're so oh, he awkward. bumped into Un Amigo uh, the, the yeah. previous one. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, where they wouldn't talk to him because yeah. they're like, oh, he's dying. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm just going to pretend and see him. Uh, yeah. Julian but... takes offense to this, which is yeah. a bit, I don't know, maybe like he's obviously, yeah. he's angry about dying. He's not really angry about being ignored, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he's probably a little bit. Well, yeah, he's a little bit annoyed there. about being ignored, but not enough to be arse going over and talk nah. with them about it. Yeah, so this guy, he he is a very nice guy. He came over and said, sorry to hear about what you're going through and everything. And he was like, he, he goes over to him after and he goes, you know, thanks a lot. I meant a lot. And then he yeah, said, that, was well, nice. you... that was a very nice scene, I thought. Um, yeah. Like, it was a very real scene. Yeah. And then the guy said, well, if you didn't break up my previous marriage, I wouldn't have met this woman. And then Julian says, all right, then I don't <laughs> forgive you or whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Something like that. It's quite funny. Yeah, it yeah. was a good scene. Um, this is around the uh, 60 minute mark and we kind of quickly find out he actually does have a son he mentioned he alluded to it earlier on in the movie and he I was said like he's, a, he's got two children the dog yeah. and the other one yeah. Yeah. but he doesn't say anything else which is no you, ha you have to through the movie when you realise actually he does have uh, some offspring and we don't even know yeah. if it's a boy or a girl up to this point um, no which I thought was a kind of weird um yeah, but, but, you know, you wouldn't even ask, "How's your son?" Yeah, and this is this is sixty. This is an hour mark, and the movie is only an hour and fifty eight. So it's like, all right, halfway through, they they pop up to Amsterdam to see him, and it's an interesting thing. Like the son doesn't look like he's he um he's happy to see him, but he gives him a hug. Then they have a very stilted conversation, and he just kept keeps on saying, Julian keeps on saying, everything's fine, blah blah blah, and then they um. The son does give him a very emotional hug at the end, and you kind of wonder, oh, okay, what's going on there? Yeah, but, uh, well, you feel like the son is kind of annoyed to see him. He, he's he's angry with him over something at, at the start of it, but he, he kind yeah. of lets it go by the end of their their, their meeting. Um, yeah, and then um, yeah, it sort of mir it kind of mirrors the theme of them not speaking their their emotions mm. because a couple a couple of scenes later we meet the ex wife and we find out quite shockingly that the son knows about his impending doom and demise. Yeah. So very and similar the, to his dad. He was like, right, yeah. he wasn't able to tell the son. The son wasn't able to say, by the way, I know you've decided to back off earlier. Uh, and I know you're dead or soon to be. Yeah. So that's interesting. So yeah, it's a sort of a mirror of, you know, maybe the, the theme of the movie, it's an unspoken, unspoken or things that aren't said, you know, things that yeah. stay in, inside and you internally live with them. Um, sure, they go home from Amsterdam and go to Finnegan's Bar and I, I just had to search it up. I had to, I had to search up Finnegan's Bar Madrid and it did actually exist, but it's permanently closed now, huh. which That's is a shame. shame. Looks like a yeah. Good yeah, they all get drunk and they all get hung over or whatever. And um, I think the next morning they're having cafe or whatever. They're they meet up with a second applicant because the first applicants didn't go through for, for Truman and she's like total cow yeah, basically. Yeah. She's, but like it's like 11 o'clock in the morning. She's having pints. That's not a great stretch. Uh, <laughs> even I'm like, oh, a bit early. Um, and then the, the, there's a waiter in the bar and she starts basically shouting at him, berating him for being slow at de delivering a, uh, her next drink. Uh, yeah. And he's talking... Julian's talking about, yeah, yeah, I'm going to give the dog to her in the next couple of days. And Tomas is like, no, you're not. She, she's crap, not that person. She's yeah, a big she's crap racist. racist. Yeah. Yeah, but she didn't even pet Truman on the way out. And I'm like going, no, that's, you're, not, you're not getting that no. dog. Yeah, not a dog person. Not, not somebody who's going to look after the dog or care for the dog. Yeah, I don't really know what, why she, what she was doing that for. But uh, he kind of mentions in this cafe the morning after, you know, how didn't I realize when I hugged my son that he knew you know like after they 
after they bump into the ex-wife on the street, he, he kind of reflects on that and it's like, then he says, I'm just going to walk away and have a bit of a cry, you know. Don't mind me, I'm going over here in the corner to cry. Yeah. Whereas Tomas is like, eh, okay, I'll just stand here looking awkward. Yeah. Um, we kind of get, you know, I didn't know how this movie was going to deal with his impending doom. Like, where are we going to see it? A bit like, you know, Philadelphia, you know, with Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't really get a lot, but he does have a toilet accent. He pees on, on himself and it's like, okay, well, that's... <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Uh, no, yeah. he shouldn't. <laughs> I should but yeah, it, it, it's a sad, it is terrible. It's a terrible scene um, in that his dignity is just wiped away with one little PP accident. Um, and, That's and the you can see medical it, term. It, yeah, you can see it really affects him. Like he's, he's really hurt by it. You know, it's, and then, and, and this is where he's decided that uh, I think that that, that evening uh, after mm, the, the PP accident, um, he, he has his friends over Paula and Tomas and they're having dinner. And he says, uh, "I'm not. I'm not going to wait for this to kill me. Uh, as soon as this, the PP accidents become, you know, more frequent uh, and becomes unpleasant to live, I'm just going to do myself in." Yeah. No, paraphrasing, but yeah, that's effectively what he says. Now he says it in Spanish too. So yeah, I yeah, really it would have been weird if he <laughs> decided to <laughs> break out of an Irish accent and, and say it in English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? Back, I, just, well, I want to relate back to the Amsterdam scene when they go up to the to the boat uh, the and barge, the, yeah, yeah. the student is there. And I thought, actually, it was kind of a cute scene when uh, Thomas has to translate for Julian. Julian hasn't got a clue what he's what's saying in English. <laughs> I thought it was quite cute the way they acted that one out. It was, that was it fun. It was quite good, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're around the one hour and 30 minute mark at this point, and they're having that dinner that you say, and he does mention he's assisted suicide. And yeah, they just... Um, it peters out and Paula gets very angry that, you know, Thomas is just accepting that Julian has made his mind up and she legs it out the door. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Thomas is saying, you know, four days have gone past fast, you know, felt like we didn't really talk much, yeah. you know, and it's just typical male emotions. Couldn't say what they feel or whatever. Anyway, he heads out and he meets Paula on the outside and she goes, Oh, and she's like going, no, we don't want to say goodbye like this. She goes, oh, you want me to come up to your room? And I can't like, believe sure. he actually, <laughs> can't believe he actually did that. He's got a perfect family at home. It's like, what? That was terrible. I didn't like it. I, I felt the vibe at the start of the movie. It's like, hmm, are they going to get together? Yeah. That's there was good. always a feeling though when they were in on in on the same scene, like that they were. Yeah, there was tension between them in, of that type. Um, it, it, it kind of. A, I have a lesser of an opinion of the Tomas character for doing that. It's yeah, kind of annoying. It didn't need to happen. Didn't even need to be in the movie. No, um, I don't know. That, that's one piece I didn't like. That it was I, in the movie. Uh, <laughs> I guess they it, used that as a tool to then finally show Thomas breaking down, crying, and sobbing. After yeah, it's the first time he shows any emotion. I guess. Yeah. So I um, guess in that sense, maybe, but like, I'd rather they did that when he just had a nice heart to heart conversation with, with Julian, you know, I'd, I'd, that would be more, you know, adapt, you know, effective for me in for this, for the, for the plot line, I yeah. believe. Uh, yeah, I didn't like that. Um, Oh, I forgot to mention, I thought as well, like, yeah, I think the movie is pretty good at doing this, this as, as I've said several times now, the, the subtle little little things that logically and logistically have to happen when you're dying. And like, I just, I, we skipped over the scene where he's, he, uh, Julian is actually an actor and he's backstage and oh, the producer Christ, comes in yeah. and goes. This is kind of important, yeah. Yeah, and he kind of goes, listen, you're going to be gone, so uh, we've, we have to get somebody else to, to come in and <laughs> after really, lunch, Julian, yeah. uh, Julian kind of go, what just happened? And Thomas goes, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he delivers that line as well. It's like, yeah, uh, yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't sugarcoat. He says, you, you're just fired, son. I say, oh, okay. Yeah. It, it was so a like, supreme dick move from his boss. Uh, really sorry that you're dying. By the way, we've got something to replace you. It was difficult, but we did it. Yeah, they're not as good as you, but um, goodbye. See you later. Have a no encore for you. <laughs> um, well, then we're at the end of the movie, and there's the airport. Goodbye. They all go to the airport after 
specifically saying they wouldn't have an airport goodbye. But uh, but wait, there's Ju more. Julian just trusts all of Truman's papers into his hand, going, "Here's everything you need for him." Take Here's him. his ticket. Here's his passport. Uh, I've got loads of stuff organized. So dogs have passports. Yeah. Oh. You get pet passports. They have to no. get. You have to be checked and everything for. Um, I, I think your face. They've got little face photos. <laughs> no, no, it's like vaccinations and stuff like that, and you know because dogs can carry diseases and all that jazz. I, I've yeah, never yeah. had a dog go international, but I know it's not just a case of slapping them in oh, the luggage yeah, compartment. No, it's it's tricky. It's very tricky. That's why we don't have any. Um, but yeah, again, I was wondering in the run up to the end, and the movie went quite fast for me, to be honest with you. I didn't really feel like it was two hour, nearly two hours long. Uh, and that was me coming out, watched Oppenheimer during the week. That was three hours. I felt like three hours. To every, be every movie after that is quick. Yeah. But um, I was wondering how they're going to do the goodbye. And you know, it's a bit underwhelming. It wasn't. And he didn't even pet Truman Julian when he said goodbye to me. Just. It was, yeah, here's it was dog. underwhelming. Jog on. Yeah, here's my dog. See ya. And then it just shows Thomas in the plane with the collar, with Truman's leash and collar in his hand, and then it fades to black. Finn. Uh, Truman does look back when he walks away, and that's kind of cute and sad as well. But again, it didn't really hit as hard as, as it should have. Yep. As, as you said before, like um, usually when there's a sad movie with a dog, the dog part of it can be quite, I don't know, it, it, more, it, it evokes more emotion usually than yeah. human dying or human experiencing yeah. pain. Yeah. But that, that to me anyway is very true. I just think it's not, it's not really not pushed in this movie at all. They don't really. No. I would go for that. Like, I like Truman isn't the pivotal part here and he shouldn't be the title of the movie. It should be, it should be a part of the plot. Yeah, but it's not the plot. It's about unanswered untalked about emotions between male friends yeah and, and, I, and i think for that reason the the title or the the the, the name of the movie is wrong it's misleading right yeah i think so i can truman's a lovely little device but he's not it shouldn't be named after him sorry truman <laughs> I, tr I tried to look up and see if um the dog actor that played truman whose real name is troy low i tried to see if he was still alive because i wanted to to... No, he's, he's dead now, Colin. How do you know? He's a dog. He's dead. It was only 2017 or 2015. It's only 2015. eight years. Uh, well, he was, yeah, wasn't a young dog then either. Yeah, 2015. And then it's, that's eight years, and those big dogs don't last long. No, so, they yeah. don't. He, he's well dead. Sorry. Yeah, that's a shame. Oh, you're sad. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um. All right, so listen. When all said and done, I think it's quite average plot i think there's a lot of i thought it was pretty good i'm just going average i'm going 2.5 out of 5 because there's a lot of missed opportunities with it and it doesn't deserve any more in my in my book yeah, you've, you've rated exactly the same as me i went with 2.5 while i enjoyed the plot it, it's not groundbreaking or anything like that you know it, it, there were bits missing as, as you said that like um the the dog part should have been expanded upon more I don't know if I agree with you that the emotions between the lads should have been investigated more. I think it was sure. actually accurate in describing some male relationships where people just can't talk about the crap they probably should be talking about. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but yeah, 2.5 is about right. Yeah. Um, I thought acting was uh, better than average. I gave it 2.75. I thought... The two lead characters, Thomas and Julian, played it very well. Like if you yeah. compare it to something like the sisters or whatever, it's like <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yes, there's a slight difference. Um no, I, I, I give it yeah. I give it three. I thought they were very good. Uh, like the two main guys just bang on. And and and, and the girl playing uh Paula um was her name, Dolores Fonzie. Dolores was a great Fonzie. name. Hey <laughs> <laughs> you died. Hey, Hey, yeah. <laughs> Pick the jukebox yeah. on the way out of the bar. Uh, uh, yeah, I yeah, think very good. Yeah, Javier Camara plays Thomas and Ricardo. Ricardo. Darren. Or Darren plays Julian. Actually, I thought near the end of the movie, I thought Julian really just looked like a f***ed up Noel Gallagher. 
Yes, absolutely, he did. Yeah. yeah. Even even more depressed than Noel Gallagher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he had a face like a bag Slap, of smashed hammers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 2.75 for me and 3 for you. Um, sound brackets track. I didn't really notice the sound track during the movie at all. There was a bit of piano in the background. Yeah, the, like... the, the bits that are in it are actually they're reasonably decent. There's a bit of Spanish guitar kicking around. There's mm. Argentinian rock, whatever the hell that is. Um, uh, yeah, it was okay. Um, it's not that important in this movie, though. No, no. I, I Yeah. It didn't drive it for me, and it didn't really add too much to it or, or take away a lot either. But yeah, I gave it one point seven five out of five. It's just like I just really have nothing to say. I, about I it, always really. insist on being at least two or point two five more than you. So this is two point zero for me. <laughs> no worries. And production in general, I thought it was fine. I thought there's one. There was one. Did you pick up on anything at all, audio wise, or SFX wise? No, I'm maybe not it's just me. Yeah, so like I have an issue with footstep sound effects. Okay. I believe they really overdone it in a lot of scenes and a lot of fakery. Obviously, footsteps are, are added later in so you're, the you're scenes. Gonna, you're going to say that the Foley artists let them down in this one, yeah? Yeah, Foley, right? Foley artists, is that the, the Foley or Foley? Technical... I don't know. I'm it's not a Foley. Guy, but Foley guy. Got... Caravaggio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rembrandt, Pit <laughs> the Elder. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so like the footsteps, just if, if anybody watches this movie, listen for the footsteps, because I think in some ones, even I think it was the library even, or the, the bookstore when they're in there, it didn't look like cement or anything, but the footsteps were sounding like they were walking like in cement. Yeah. yeah. Coconuts <laughs> together. <laughs> it's like, where's the horse? Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I gave a 1.75 production. I thought, like, in general, it's it's well produced, but I couldn't get rid of that. The footsteps, wreck your head. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I missed the footsteps. I, I might watch back that scene just to be yeah, mental or not. Um, but I gave a 2.5. I thought it was serviceable, middle of the road. Nothing jumped out at me. Clearly, I didn't hear the footsteps. Um, I didn't see anything good or bad, and so I just went, eh. It, yeah, it yeah. did the job, and it did it well. Yeah. Yeah, not, not a bad movie, uh, you know, and some, and again, I like the way that our little podcast project is giving us this, these movies, but we, we're, we're getting a lot of, we're not getting a lot of foreign movies, but it's, it feels like we're get when we get up to the top numbers, we get thrown these curveball movies, you know, that aren't... Yeah what we probably would want you know it, it can be harder to to review a movie that's not english because obviously we don't we're not native spanish speakers not even close uh, uh same with like uh the indian movie or documentary it was kind of at times difficult yeah well that was yeah it was way harder but even when you look down to write your notes you're missing something <laughs> that's in the yeah subtitles. That, that's what wrecking my head and it's like he's gone on to the next paragraph I'm like oh come on rewind you just <laughs> missed yeah you missed the key for the entire plot when you're writing down something about <laughs> footsteps yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um lee marshall and screen daily gave it 70 out of 100 he said a genuine likable loose-limbed buddy dramedy about impending death mm. and Steve Davis, not the snooker player, <laughs> in, in the Austin Chronicle, he gave it a hundred out of a hundred. He said, well, "There isn't one. No, there isn't one false move in Thomas Aragi and Cesc Gay's beautifully modulated screenplay." Clearly, yes, didn't hear perfect footsteps. Goes. No, no, no. <laughs> footsteps. Um, okay, so that's um, the lowest and the highest um, view there. So. We will um, put Truman into his doggy bed and move on. That's a good to... boy. Yeah, yeah. That's a good boy, Truman. So we'll move on and uh, roll the dice for episode 19 and see what number we get. Oh, I'm very sorry. It's 15,176. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Uh... 15,176. Yeah. It's a big number. All right, fifteen thousand one hundred seventy-six is a movie that's rated twenty-five out of a hundred. It was released <laughs> in 
August 2022, and it's a movie called Me Time. Oh, God. And the synopsis is when stay-at-home dad finds himself with some me time for the first time in years while his wife and kids are away, he reconnects with his former best friend for a wild weekend and nearly upends his life. It's a Netflix movie as well, so it's going to show you what else. So there's um, Kevin Hart is in it at some point, but he's not the main... He's not the main... Okay. A Kevin Hart movie where... Oh, God. Kevin Hart. Oh. Or maybe he is one of the... Mark Wahlberg, <laughs> Kevin Hart. So maybe they're the two... Yeah, they might be the two main stars of it. They're just not listed at the top, but I'm guessing they're the two. Yeah, they're, they're the two headliners. I'm not a very big fan of Kevin Hart. I really don't think he's funny, so I'm going to probably crap all over this movie. Yeah, and Mr. Wahlberg is, is, for the vast majority of his movies, not great. Apart from Ted. <laughs> Everything else is shocking. Yeah, I don't really go out of my way to watch Mark Wahlberg. He's he's Um, rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, yeah, I don't really... Anyway, it's not going to be. It's a hundred and... Let's see, how long is it? It's like... Hopefully it's not. Yeah, it's 101 minutes, so it's good. It's like That's an hour, an hour and a half, so we'll, yeah. we can get rid of that. Actually, it's the production is Heartbeat Production, so I'm guessing it's Kevin Hart's production company. Yeah, so. smells like it. Yeah, it smells like it, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that'll be something to look forward to um, crapping all over and <laughs> making yeah. people realize why it's not funny so much. And that's fine. And we're getting up to nearly episode 20 where we give ourselves a nice rest and we pick a movie from the top thousand. So we are that's, slowly that's, getting That's where we get a documentary again, isn't it? Yeah. The Pakistani documentary as opposed to the Indian one this time. So, Very good. We'll, uh, yeah. So, that's it. So, great. So, that's episode 18. Um, I was just looking on Spotify and people have started been giving us ratings in Spotify. So, we're at 4.8 out of 5 in Spotify right now. So, that's nice to see. So, if you haven't rated us on Spotify, please do. Don't give us four, give us fives. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you can also leave a review and a rating as well. So thank you for all the people that have done that already. And that is the end of episode 18. And we'll see you in episode 19. Bye-bye. Cheerio.